The compressor is installed in the machine following the instructions shown in the film. Connect the air duct to the machine. The connectors are the same. Connect the supply to the compressor in the accessory socket under the machine's electric panel. Set the small 50 under the concrete mixer. Check whether the concrete mixer is high enough and can unload into the hopper. In most cases you will have to raise it by about 10 centimeters. In others, the need will arise to take the wheel off the concrete mixer to be able to centre the hopper under the unloading outlet. Install the pressure gorge to help keep under control the pressure required to push the material through the piping. Also to detect the presence of pressure in the piping in the event of disassembly. Lay the air pipe. Usually we start from the furthest point, lengthening the pipe as much as possible. It can be shortened at the end of the working day if it is no longer necessary to reach those distances in the days that follow. This helps to protect the chamber from wear. Avoid twisting the pipe because if it is pulled, the bends might obstruct it. Now connect the air pipe to the machine. Firstly, check that the seals are present and in good condition. The air nozzle and air compressor connection point can be inverted without affecting operation. Now, lay the material pipe along the same route as the air pipe, paying attention to the same points as mentioned previously. It is important to avoid tight bends because they create a resistance to the flow of the material, compromising correct operation. Now, connect the piping to the small 50. Make sure that the connection is perfectly clean and that the seal is in good condition. If the levers are difficult to close, check the joint for deposits. These steps must be carried out in the sequence described. We are now going to show you what to do when needing to pump to the upper floors. Lower the pipes to avoid the use of ropes or the like. Avoid tangling the air line with the material line. Fasten the piping to the scaffolding to prevent the formation of bottlenecks, especially in the column terminal bend when the piping is full of material, therefore heavier. One of the most important 
point where the piping has to be fastened to the scaffolding is the coupling. Fasten the piping so that the weight is lightened, otherwise it would weigh completely on the coupling. Now fit the spray nozzle. Firstly check that the coupling and seal are clean. If it is difficult to close the levers, check that there are no deposits inside the coupling. Connect the air pipe, making sure that the joints are sealed and that they are in good condition. Connect the air unit to the material piping, only in the models that adopt this system. Open the air tap, moving it to the open position. This tap is the machine's remote control. Tap open means machine working. Tap closed means machine stopped. Adjust the air nozzle. The centre nozzle, where the air needed for spraying comes from, must remain at a distance of about 1.5 to 1.8 millimetres from the narrow material outlet. If this nozzle is positioned too near to the narrow outlet, it would not allow a good flow of the material, thus causing problems for normal operation. Lock the nozzle in place, tightening the eye bolts provided with our hands. Connect the machine to the site control board using the cable provided. To connect the IP67 socket to the IP67 plug in the electric board, it is important to connect to the main side board. In homes, avoid current sockets far away from the main meter. For distances over 20 meters, use cables with a 4 mm cross section. Stretch out the electric cable completely. As soon as the power is switched on, a blue warning light on the panel comes on. Connect the vibrating riddle to the electric panel. Turn on the red-yellow main circuit breaker and test the vibrating riddle. Using the special switch, turn the vibrator on and off. The vibrating riddle has a safety sensor. When the vibrating riddle is removed, the main circuit breaker is stripped, turning off the electric panel. As may be noted, the display turns off and a red warning light turns on. The machine is off. After refitting the vibrating riddle, it will be necessary to use the main circuit breaker to turn the machine on again. Using the two center buttons, you can increase or reduce the material flow rate from a minimum of 3, which is 0.8 litres a minute, to a maximum of 75, which is 14 litres a minute. Set the machine to 50, meaning 10 litres a minute, to start. Setup is completed. For starting, you need to prepare about 10 to 15 litres of liquid cement. Pour the cement into a bucket containing about 6 to 7 litres of water. Then mix well. Add more cement. The mix will be right when it is rather thick. The liquid cement will act as a lubricant during the first passage of the material in the pipe. It is important for the mixture not to be too liquid. 
Remove any clumps. Pour the liquid cement directly into the small 50s hopper. Turn the vibrator on. With the help of vibration, move the whole contents of the bucket down into the hopper. Turn the vibrator off. Then start to make our mix. The mix should contain a minimum quantity of binder, meaning 300 kilograms per cubic meter of aggregates. The binder contained in the mix volume should be at least 25%. Minimum batches. Three hundred and fifty liters rated mixer, about seventy five kilograms of binder. Two hundred and fifty liters rated mixer about 60 kilograms of binder. One hundred and forty liters rated mixer, about thirty five kilograms of binder. To see whether the mix is pumpable, you take it in the palm of your hand and squeeze. If sand can be seen in the mix remaining on the palm, the quantity of bind is not enough. However, if almost all the mix runs off the hand, it is correct. We are ready with the mix. Take off the liquid cement bucket that has already drained. Then make sure that the machine is set to 50 and using the selector we start to run the pump to pump the liquid cement poured previously into the machine hopper. Watching through the meshes of the vibrating riddle, we wait for the liquid cement to be pumped into the pipe until we start to see the stirrer. Then we will stop to prevent the pump from working dry. Using this selector, set the machine to stop. At this point, the mix is ready in the concrete mixer and the liquid cement has been pumped into the pipe. Then we can continue. Turn the compressor on. Then turn on the vibrator using the thermal safety switch. 
Pour the mix into the hopper until it is filled. The vibrating riddle will stop any large aggregates or anything else that might cause problems, especially on the spraying nozzle, where the passage is particularly narrow. Turn the vibrator off. Using the selector, start to pump the mix. Near where we intend to do our spraying, we have placed a bucket to collect the liquid cement used for starting. While pumping, we keep the thrust pressure under control. Any clogging is revealed by sudden rises in the pressure. In this case, we are stable at about 4 bars. Wait for the mix to come out at the right consistency as it has been made. At this point, using the control tap on the nozzle, we stop the small 50. Using the plus button, we increase the flow rate and set it to 65. The display will show two messages. The first will indicate the flow rate of 65. The second intermittent stop indicates the standby status given by an external control. In this case, the control is the air tap that is closed at present. To start again, all we need to do is open it. If the flow rate is too high, the display will show error code 04. We can simply reduce the flow rate by about 10 to 15 points, reset the machine and start again. If there are any problems with the mix, this error will be shown again, in which case it will be necessary to add some binder to the mix. Fill the hopper with material, emptying the concrete mixer. Now we retrieve the starting liquid cement to make the next mix. Open the air tap quickly and completely to start spraying the mix. Start by laying and preparing the guide bands. Then we can stop the machine every time we want, working on the air tap. When we have decided on the thickness we want, we can adjust it by increasing or reducing the movement speed. The piping is light and thin and allows us to move freely. Now we fit the guide profiles which will be accurately levelled. Once the profiles have been arranged, we start to fill the areas between one band and the next.
Usually this type of work needs a team of three persons. One for laying the material, one for spreading the sprayed material and the third for making the mixes and keeping the machine supplied. Making one mix after another and keeping the batching constant. In our case, the material thrust pressure is excellent. The maximum operating pressure advisable is 12 bars with ready mixed products. The maximum pressure that can be reached is 25 bars. In this pressure condition, should it be necessary to rise to 10 meters, the pressure would rise by about 2 bars and we would have a total of 6 bars. The head is not a big obstacle. Up to 15 meters, there will be no problem. Over that, we would have problems due to the total length of the piping because it should never exceed a total of 30 meters. Spreading the plaster takes place in different layers. Every layer must not exceed 2 cm in thickness to avoid cracks when the work has been finished. We are now finishing the first layer. This is the result of the first coat. Then we rule it to clean the guide profiles and flatten out any excess. At the end of this operation, before the final coat, we will wait for a few minutes for the material to set. In the meantime, we will continue with the first layer in the other areas. We finish spraying. Open the air and start. As before, we stop the machine, slowly closing the air tap so that the pump motor stops and the compressor continues pumping air to waste as little product as possible. Final spreading. We then use the excess material to seal any small gaps.
We will then have a thickness of about 4 cm. And there is very little leftovers. When we have finished our day's work, the concrete mixer has been emptied completely. We finish pumping the contents of the machine, keeping the vibrator on so the vibrations help all the material to move down. When we start to see the stirrer, we stop the machine before it takes in air. With the machine stopped, we stop the compressor as well. We then turn the selector counter clockwise. This way the pump will turn in the opposite direction, drawing pressure from the pipe. We then remove the nozzle, take it to pieces, and start cleaning it. Thorough cleaning of the nozzle is important, especially the air unit, to avoid and prevent deposits inside the nozzle. We then scrape the inside of the nozzle using the special file provided in the machine kit. Now we refit our nozzle. We then disconnect the vibrating riddle plug from the panel. Now we remove the vibrating riddle for easy cleaning. In removing the vibrating riddle, the machine will switch off completely. We then wash it carefully. Avoid wetting the plug and take care not to spoil the vibrator's electric cable. We then remove the piping and the pressure gorge. Now put the washing sponge inside the pipe. We then wash the pipe coupling. It is important to carefully follow the sequence of operations and method to prevent clogging due to the separation of aggregate and binder following the admission of water into the pipe. We then wash the pressure gorge. Remove the hopper's drain plug. This is the material left in the hopper that we will have to remove. We then wash the hopper with a jet of water, draining it to the ground.
then put the plug back on. Refit the vibrating riddle and connect it. Then fill the hopper with water. Turn on the panel, setting the machine to 50 again and start the pump. This way we wash inside the chamber. Still using the file provided with the kit and with the machine working, we scrape the bottom of the outlet flange to remove any deposits. When the water comes out clean, we turn off the pump. Refit the pressure gorge. We then connect the piping. Place the other end of the piping in a container and start the machine. We pump the washing sponge, which being between the material and the water, will act as separator and squashing itself due to the effect of the pressure, it will rub the piping and clean it. Once the sponge has come out of the coupling, we clean the coupling. At this point, we check the thrust pressure and the wear condition of the chamber, bending the pipe to obstruct it. Check for the optimum pressure with water that will be between 5 and 7 bars. If the optimum pressure has not been reached, we tighten each of the three bolts on the chamber by one turn each using two 90mm wrenches and check again. If no result is obtained repeating this operation a few times, we will change the chamber. Then switch everything off. Remove the hopper plug to empty the water. Empty the water from the pipes to prevent it from freezing and mixing the following day with the liquid cement used for starting, making it too thin and unusable. Rewind the piping if it is not necessary for the day after. Grease the machine at the end of every day. Then we knock out the cones with a hammer. Then we fit the new chamber, taking care to check that the supply manifold is clean. The cones must be positioned with a flat part towards the manifold.